Um, so what we do here is give you, uh, give you an introduction to the concept of the front controller and show you its implementation in Magento and how Magento uses configuration to get to the routes. So by the end of the day, we'll be doing controller stuff. And if you've ever worked with Magento, controller can be like the bane of your existence if you need to do any rewrites or figure out how they work, what, what to put in the XML, what not to put. We will demystify all of this for you. So we start with the front controller. All right. You recall this diagram from the previous lesson <clears throat> where we initialize the application and then we get down to routing, which is the responsibility of the front controller. Well, the front controller has five areas of responsibility. It gathers routes via its init method. Apply database URL rewrites. So these are the rewrites that are built into the database um, when you make a category, when you make a product. These paths are stored in the database with some additional information. And Magento will inspect the current path against the database to see if it needs to translate to a, an actual internal uh, path. And we'll look at that actually extensively in the next lesson. So after that, we, we apply configuration URL rewrites. These are, <coughs> these are um, not the way you do rewrites anymore, deprecated. But the facility is still there. Um, next up is matching, uh, matching a router. So we, we, we find out which router should be, uh, which should be dispatching this, uh, handling this request, and then um, get it into the right hands, into the right module controller file, and send some output. That's what, that's what front controller does. So uh, front controller is the area of the application that uh, handles all the logic and um, objects involved with request and response. Another diagram of this is, you know, the actor. In this case, the visitor to the site. Give me a page. Index.php kicks off mage run, kicks off app run, fires up our environment, our config, looks uh, at our cache, initializes modules, applies updates. And then we instantiate mage core controller variant front. That's the front controller. Um, and then we go and find our, uh, find the appropriate router and route the request to the correct controller. That's it. It's about as deep as we go. Here is another diagram of exactly what I just said. So front controller initialization, so this is in uh, Mage Core Model app. Uh, th things to, to notice here and run are this process request. This is full page caching in enterprise. So basically if, um, if this method returns something at all, then we don't, kick off, uh, we don't kick off the routing. We just simply return the content that we have cached. That's why full page caching is so fast. It, it's, um, <coughs> the, the availability of a cached instance of a page is determined very early on in the application, uh, in the application initialization. So if not, though, we get our front controller and dispatch. So inside our front controller, there's this init method, and what we really do is we loop through uh, we loop through our configuration files and build out a bunch of information, just build out this array structure, and add a router that we can then use to hopefully dispatch uh, dispatch requests. So when uh, then inside of dispatch, we apply database URL rewrites. Okay, so. Um, this is, yeah, mage get model core URL rewrite. So this is actually where we get our, um, at this point, we have our configuration object working 
Magento internally uses its factory method to get this file. Where is this file found? Mage Core. Mage Core. Model URL rewrite. Exactly. That's it. And the, the, the URL rewrite um, model is it's nice. It's a nice, uh, simple entity in the system. Just one table to represent the data. <coughs> yeah, one, one complete row represents one complete rewrite um, entity. So basically, we just check and see okay, do we, you know, does this, does this route on which we currently are, for example, uh, here I've got this nice pretty URL, search engine friendly, electronics cell phones Um If this were, uh, let's see, you know, say, say this, this category ID is 10, then if, if, if I weren't using these nice search engine friendly URLs, I would have uh, my web route and then instead of electronic cell phones at HTML, I would have catalog, category, view, ID 10. Not very good. Not very good for search engines. So the nice thing is when you create a category, uh, Magento will actually build this stuff out for you. And you are, are free to specify it yourself. Uh, we'll be looking at that in a second. So again, what happens though, the reason that I get the content from catalog category view ID 10 when I go to that pretty URL is just because uh, there's a match in the database and Magento will translate that to the actual application path internally. Uh, and then uh, this rewrite is just the function that evaluates these global rewrites that you can specify in the configuration. This is a brute force and seriously deprecated way of doing control rewrites. You would never do this anymore. Um, Number four, all right. Well, we check with each of the routers and say, hey, can you handle this? And again, we're just inspecting. Um, we're just <laughs> doing string comparison, basically. Uh, and then there's this, you see this, you know, incrementer for less than 100. Basically, if you mess up your code somewhere and you have your module redirect to a module which redirects to that module, well, obviously, that would be it's like when we were all learning basic and you'd like, you know, line one, go to 10, line 10, go to one, and you know, the computer would melt. But, well, this one you'll see, you'll see a nice little error message, you know, the maximum, maximum number of dispatch calls have been, have been hit. Um, all right, so then, the, number five. This is really, this is, the, this is the, the goal of what we're doing. We need to get the response object, whatever's been tacked onto the response object, and send it to the browser. It was just the number that was chosen. Um, I mean, because it just makes you, you will never, you would never have, you would never, um, you would never have this many um, attempts at a route match. Uh, again, the only, the only time you're going to come up against this is, uh, is if you have some error in your code. Yeah, we'll actually look at this configuration in just a second. Uh, it makes a lot more sense. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're dealing with in here. Um, and, and, and even further down <laughs> into the code. But um, it makes much more sense looking at it from the configuration standpoint. Again, Magento just always comes down to configuration. Because anything that the system is doing, it, it has to connect somewhere in some XML file. OK. So now an exercise, uh, locate the front controller class. Mage core, controller, very in front. Um, list all the events that the front controller fires. Let's see, OK, so let's find this. So this class, I'll go ahead and write it up here. It should be in your book in a couple places, but this is a great place to look. Again, if you want some more insight into the internals. Mage core controller bearing front. Um, so <clears throat> let's see. 
And you can see here uh, the default router that's that's added last. This is the uh, this is what handles like 404 stuff. So that's why your request can always be handled by Magento, even if it's a 404. It's just because of this default router. So let's see. All right. Next method though is dispatch. So we get our request object. All right. And here, uh, some profiler methods. But what we're looking for are some dispatched events. So I'll go to the top of this file. What's the first one here? Dispatch event. Oh, so in our initialization, controller front init before. All right. So what could we do with this? Anyone? What's that? Yeah, I mean we can we can observe we can observe and do anything we want with this. We could use this to, uh, I mean we could basically write to a log and just said, hey, okay, so we, we this is when we started off our um, this is when we initialized our our front controller. Um, this is at the very high up in the request. So we could set up our own logging information just to. I don't know, profile, profile rendering time resources. OK. What about another one? Init routes. Well, here, well, we could use this observer. We could actually um, and it routers. We could we can actually uh, do something similar here. Maybe we could add another router to the system. Um, and because it would be added ahead of this default router. That's how the CMS router works. It's added by an event. Okay. See the next one. <laughs> okay. Anyone ha have an idea what we could do with controller front, front send response before? <laughs> Any idea at all what we could do with that? Yeah, uh, we could do. Yeah, we could check our check our output. Um, <laughs> we could also allow set a cookie. <laughs> so this one's our gimme. You guys do need coffee. All right, uh, and then we have controller front send response after. So we could we could uh, in the detail some of the rendering time in here, in number of events, or you know just success log some sort of success message that we successfully handled a request. Okay, sky's the limit. Those events are there for you for you to use and abuse. All right, wow, that was quick and easy.